As soon as the wet plate photography system came into being, intrepid photographers set off to every corner of the globe. Travellers have been bringing back stories of the wondrous thing they've seen for centuries, but now the photographers could bring back concrete evidence. Pictures. Did they get set up? There we are. The cameras were very bulky and very heavy, and the equipment they had to take with them was also incredibly bulky and heavy. Imagine carting all this lot on your back through the jungle. Good trek if you can do it. However, once on site, they would line up the camera. They'd be able to line it up by looking through a glass screen and removing the cover at the front. And when they'd line the shot up, they then had to prepare the plate because the photographs were produced on glass plates like this. And these must have been very heavy and also very fragile to cut halfway around the world. And they had to be prepared directly before you took the picture. So the plate was covered with this oily stuff, which is called collodion. And it was developed by the medical profession for covering cuts and grazes to keep the dirt out while the skin healed. But it proved very successful and it was used in photography. Now, the next part of the process takes place in absolute darkness. So I'm going in here, and you can't see this. Sorry. <clears throat> what are you doing in here? We're well, all right, as long as you keep your flap shut. It's got to happen in darkness, you see. It all gets very intense. Now, the plate was immersed in silver nitrate. And then lifted out and placed sticky side down in the frame. Drain off a bit. Place carefully. Close up. Keep the light out. And now we're ready to take the picture. See you outside. You got round there quick. Right. Now the wet plate was placed in the camera. The glass screen removed. The plate exposed. And lastly, the lens cover removed for the required number of seconds. And there we have one picture of the Taj Mahal. But now we'd have to set up the whole process again. But there was no end of snap-happy chappies zooming all over the world, taking pictures of things that had never been photographed before. There was also no end of people who wanted their picture taken. People flocked to photographic studios in every town and city. As many as 200 people were catered for every day in one single studio. And to attract customers, they'd have beautiful exotic settings. How would you like to have a picture in India? No? All right then. How about the pyramids? Hey! Everybody wanted pictures. Soon, everybody wanted to take their own pictures. So the method had to be much simpler. A man called Eastman produced this Kodak camera. Simplicity itself, that took a hundred pictures. You had to count them off, but when you'd taken the hundred, you sent the whole camera back to the makers. He removed the film, developed it, put a new film in, sent the whole package back to you. It's all done for you. The first photographic service and the first use of roll film. Cameras had to be very simple. They even made them for children, like this brownie here. Even a baby could operate it. And they were even baby-sized cameras. Look at this. This camera is an exact replica of the one it's standing on. And it was made for Queen Mary's doll's house. And it took pictures. Look at that. There's the negative. Hmm. There's always been a market for secretive cameras. Look at that. Designed to be thin to go under the shirt so that the lens would stick out through your shirt buttonhole, and you can secretly click, click take pictures. A detective camera. How about this one? Some books? Of course. Until you want to take a picture, and then you quickly line up in the viewfinder, uncover the lens, click, back under the arm, and away with your books. A secretive picture. Sherlock Holmes might have had a camera like that. Today's spies, well, nobody can be sure what kind of cameras they have, but they could be cameras like this. And these are very good for taking small pictures. But today, there are all kinds of specialist cameras. Cameras made for all kinds of functions. What about Polaroids? Instant pictures. There's the very first Polaroid camera. And the inventor, Dr. Land. Smile, please, it's Mickey. A Mickey Mouse camera. Quite modern. But the Victorians 
had loads of novel ideas to do with photography. They had their 3D cameras. Not everybody had one, but just about every household had a 3D viewer, which which they could look at their stereoscopic pictures. They're as popular as televisions are today.